everyone. Welcome to Innovation Night. Uh, today we have Corey Wichter, uh, who's running the Cataracts County IDA. Uh, we're excited to, to, to get to know you, Corey, and hear about what you're up to. So we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, Corey, why don't you give us some of your backstory? Sure. Uh, thank you. Again, I appreciate you having me on today, Tom, and uh, I look forward to this. Uh, again, Corey Wichter, I've been the director of the Cattaraugus County IDA, the Industrial Development Agency, uh, since 2006. So I've been with the agency now for going on 14 years. Prior to that, uh, I started in banking, commercial banking, if you will, at HSBC uh, Bank, which is in Buffalo, New York. Uh, if I kind of peel back, for, peel back from that, um, I went to locally, I went to Hamburg High School. Uh, I was born and raised in Southern Erie County in the town of Boston. Uh, after Hamburg High School, I went on to Canisius College, uh, where I, um, you know, kind of had a, a rivalry, if you will, with Bonas, and my brother went to Niagara, uh, so, uh, uh, you know, a lot of Western New York connection here. Uh, but no, I, I, I have, um, I started for my love of economic development, and really to see the private sector grow was in banking. I started on the residential mortgage side, got my teeth cut there. Uh, I had a tremendous boss who gave me a great opportunity to kind of see more of the world. So in terms of the world, I mean, uh, New York State, Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, Pennsylvania were our kind of sectors uh, of development that we covered. So we were in charge of uh, essentially underwriting and financing various commercial projects well, anything from large scale residential to, you know, your traditional commercial uh, ma manufacturing uh, space, if you will. So that, that led on to about uh, 2005 and my job with HSBC at that time started to migrate, if you will, more towards the Connecticut and New York City market. Uh, HSBC went through a transition with household finance out of Chicago and they were, they were uh, pushing more of the jobs to Chicago and to New York City, where HSBC has a very large, more of an international presence, if you will, and headquartered. Um, so I was flying, if you will, commuting on Sundays to Thursdays, down right down to Midtown Manhattan. Uh, it was great in my 20s, obviously. Uh, I, I was single at the time, no kids. Um, so it was a great opportunity to see much of, of the country. Uh, but starting, you know, uh, as a Western New York guy at heart in a small town person at heart, uh, and family person at heart, it started to wane on me even at that age. So um, my parents have always had uh, land. Uh, my grandfather bought a farm in Ellicottville, in the town of Mansfield, in 1951. So Cattaraugus County's always held a huge special place in my heart, always had affinity to it. I'd seemingly spent half my life there. So it's kind of played Plinko, if you will, with my career. That's how uh, my job was starting to kind of segue out the previous director had uh, mentioned that he would be retiring in time with a succession plan and kind of offered that I should, should apply for the job. Uh, so I did that, and fortunately, I was hired uh, June 1st, 2006, um, to start, start really kind of learning and, and mentoring under the board and the director at that time. Um, so, uh, again, it's been an absolute world uh, blessing of mine to, to have this job. Uh, our office, as you know, is in Ellicottville. We have a sister location at 301 North Union Street in Olean. Um, so, and we are governed by a seven-member board, seven-member board, excuse me, kind of my bosses, if you will. So, uh, it's a wonderful job. It has its, you know, obviously many stresses and uh, trials and tribulations as trying to conduct rural upstate New York, uh, in rural upstate New York, economic development. So, uh, that is truly still a passion as I wake up. Um, you know, we are a state agency, so, you know, we can kind of touch into that because a lot of what we do is mandated and governed uh, right in Albany. Uh, and that's, that always kind of gets a slant. Uh, it's not always bad, if you will, but, um, you know, I think our board does a tremendous job of trying to keep local economic development as local as we can. Um, you know, out of the 32 towns, nine villages, and two cities, that comprise Cattaraugus County. So um, it's, it's a tremendous, uh, tremendous job and, and nothing excites me more to see a shovel in the ground, a, you know, an open sign on a door um, and to see traffic and commerce, you know, in beautiful Cattaraugus County. So thank you for sharing that. So, so take us sure. back to um, 
you said while you were in banking, you started yep. getting passionate about economic development. What does that mean? Like what, you know, where did that come from? And yeah. great, you- great question. Um, what it, I guess what it lo- I looked at is I saw uh, the world started to transform in communities in different states that would they would literally you know build a system of schools and neighborhoods in in stores all in one new town. So my eyes went from seeing you know a new storefront or a new home built here singular to going to parts of the country in the Carolinas or Florida or Pennsylvania that was seeing a surge of de- development um, outside of the Poconos due to the New York City influence. So what I mean is we would go to these communities essentially that were being built, you know, proverbial overnight, a new fire hall, a new school, new developments, a new shopping mall, new, new condominiums, new businesses, new tech centers. So what I, I, I was virtually uh, on top of seeing that transform uh, a community overnight and love to see development, developers. Um, I'd love to see and learn the process of approvals and working with municipalities. I say politics is a hobby of mine. I wish I had thicker skin uh, because I would love to run one day. So of course I sit on the sidelines and learn, you know, how how towns and cities and villages, you know, adopt zoning codes and, you know, mapping out their, their planning associations. So I got to really, um, I truly think I had a joy for that internally, and that what's brought it out was just seeing hammers being swung, um, and, uh, you know, loans being made, um, things of that nature on a bigger scale. And when I came back to West New York to see, you know, uh, being an old Rust Belt or Steel Town, um, you know, the trials and tribulations associated with that, but now to see Buffalo, Western New York, uh, whether it be Jamestown, Olean having a revival. Um, albeit small, it's just, it, it is there. So that, that's what I, I kind of associate my love to it is it was probably inside and then seeing that development on a grander scale really excited it uh, and just kept that fire going where I started to almost wanted to touch and feel that more from just the lending process, if you will. Got it. Mm-hmm. Got it. So, so you joined the, um, the Cataracts County IDA Talk a little bit more about what that even is. Great question. Um, I always say my elevator speech, it better be a big building. Uh, So if I go off track here, pull me right back. Um, Cattaraugus County IDA, the Industrial Development Agency, kind of a long acronym, if you will. Um, It's an older term. Uh, Industrial development agencies were started in the late 60s, early 70s, chartered by a host county government to basically allow an IDA to offer various incentives and tax abatements for net new investment. So when I boil that all down to give it to you know, a, a talking point, we are really what I would say is a, is a ground floor economic development agency that works within the confines geographically by law of Cattaraugus County, and we serve private sector development. So I'll give you an example. Uh, a new manufacturer comes in, or it could be for that example, uh, Siemens. And Siemens says, we are going to manufacture, or we are going to build a new 50,000 square foot R&D test center. What can you help us out with? You know, what, what's out there that will make this investment happen in Olean versus Florida? So what we can put together is a series of tax incentives, real property tax savings, New York state sales tax savings and mortgage recording tax savings, basically all to offset development costs for that project for a period of years. So what I mean by that is if a developer is gonna come in, build a building, we can help sharpen that cost by abating the sales tax associated to that. Once there's a new value to the site, we're able to bless it, if you will, with a, with a real property tax savings for a period of years to allow that development to get itself under, you know, uh, under its wings, if you will. So they're not being hit right away with a heavy tax burden. So a lot of those incentives we do, um, it's, it's we verify that the incentive is made, or the, the, I'm sorry, the investment is made first, then we attach the incentive to it. To make sure that the company is in fact investing, retaining those jobs, maybe growing the job force, or adding to their you know, uh, physical plant, if you will, at that site. Got it. So, so 
if I, I'm, you know, somewhat ignorant on how this all works. Yeah. So tell me, so how do you have the power? Are you a state organization? Like how to have the power yeah. to, to work out this tax? That's a perfect question, Tom. I, exactly. And what, what deems the IDA the power is we are actually what's considered a public benefit corporation under New York state law. So we do have the ability that's granted to us by virtue of that to offer those tax incentives. So the IDA has, you know, an application. Um, we, we conduct, the board has a, you know, a review of the application. We have a public hearing. We notify all the impacted taxing jurisdictions of that project. And basically we, you know, we're in that mode that a pro if a project is qualified, that it passes, you know, it passes what it should be doing. Um, it's performing at um, the level that they deemed in their application. So when they put submit an application to the board, our seven member board reviews it. Uh, they say, okay, it's consistent with our policy. It fits a deemed um, requirement or a, a silo because we're not, IDAs are only, you know, but basically the sectors we deal with would be this manufacturing, tourism destinations, so your Holiday Valley, Hollymont, hotels, um, service, um, so, you know, a, a commercial, pri private commercial, things like we can't do would be like housing, um, retail, big box, um, but we are allowed to do what's called adaptive reuse. That's a newer uh, program that we have, so adaptive reuse, we've done a multitude of projects in various communities in Cattaraugus County, Perfect example would be, you know, ground floor retail, upper floor housing, that's trying to reinvigorate a building in a village, city, or town. So um, that's a new sector for us as well. So we probably, you know, what I kind of say is we have, and, and you know, we have five, six silos that we deal with. Uh, those projects have to kind of fit that, uh, you know, premise that it's allowable by the state and our board policy. Uh, and then again, we run the project through a very open process, notifying the public, the taxing jurisdictions, hold a public hearing, and then only until all that's completed, the board would then vote on various incentives that would be allowable to the project. So if, um, just to use an example to make it a little more concrete, at least in my head. So if I had a building that I wanted to rehab and- yep and make um, a multi-use building. So a storefront with apartment above or something to, your, to what you're saying. What would be, so like, give me an example of what I would get from you. Sure, yep. So for, for an adaptive reuse project that would qualify, um, first and foremost would be our what's called a pilot, a payment lieu of tax agreement. So essentially we would um, freeze that current uh, tax rate base and we would scale it for a period of 10 years. So it's a sliding scale. So let's say it's years one through five, 100% of net new value added is abated. So you would continue to pay, let's say it's $1,000. You as the owner would pay $1,000, but even though you say you've improved it, mm -hmm. we're kind of foregoing that to allow you because of the cost of construction and redevelopment. So you'd have a 10 year real property tax savings associated to the site. So now let's say for building materials, you wanna put in you know, all new fixtures, maybe some furnishings, paint it, you gotta you know, repurpose the brick or repoint it, maybe a sign, you, know, you wanna furnish the uh, upper floor apartments for your tenants. We, we, we would issue you a sales tax letter, okay? A New York State sales tax letter, which you would show all your vendors to basically knock out the 8% sales tax. So what I mean by that is if you buy brick, mortar material, bedding, phone lines, fax lines, computer systems, security system, new doors, windows, all of, that, all of that material is applicable to sales tax. We would issue you that letter, it would wipe it out. So you're saving um, you know, on that. So what, what we say to that is, you're typically, if you know you could save the sales tax, you might buy a better quality unit or you might buy better materials because you're, you, typically you're plowing those savings back into the project. Got it. So and if, if there's a mortgage attached to the project, um, in Cattaraugus County, there's a 1.25% mortgage recording tax. So we have the ability to remove that as well. So if you take out, you know, a million dollar note, 
you know, you're not paying $12,500 just in a, in, a, in a mortgage recording tax. You're saving that dollar, you know, those dollars. So typically that's how it go. We, we would run together a schedule of benefits. If you say, hey, my project again is 500,000, you know, we typically could save you over the life of that period. You know, it's probably well into the five digits, six did, you know, um, 50, yeah. $60,000 in savings. Got so it. that's how we're trying to encourage that redevelopment, reinvestment with the tax abatement programs that we have. Excellent. And um, so how, when should someone um, engage with you? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question as well, because I always tell people, if you're starting, if you in your head, uh, you're saying, I'm going to start a project, uh, let's say for purposes May 1st, I always like to, to have people come to us, you know, earlier the better, but we can typically, you know, 30 days prior would be, would be, you know, something we could work with. Um, I always try to tell people, you know, if you're starting, you know, come to us sooner. We always, you know, we're trying to always work with developers, private sector, you know, our, our building inspectors, uh, local real estate people that know the IDA or what, you know, what can help a project. So typically within 30 days, we like to get the application completed. We tee it up for our a, a board meeting to, to get our process started. Got it. Very much like underwriting a possible loan. And those can be right. parallel tracks as well. Yeah. So do, so are you, um, so are people finding you and coming to you or are you going to them and saying, Hey, there's these programs. Yeah, it's, it, that's a great question. Um, it, it, it's a little bit of both. Um, and I, and I don't mean to give a candy answer, but, but it's not, it's, you know, the IDA staff, if you will, is myself and Sandy Andrews who kind of mans the, for when I'm out on the field. So um, we, we do rely on literally any sort of referral, whether it's working with, you know, private professionals, our chambers of commerce, our lenders is, is always is, is good to know, um, building inspectors, whether it's past uh, relationships, and a lot of different, pri uh, I'm not saying private, um, uh, like trade organizations I belong to, whether it be NYSCAR, which is a commercial association of realtors group, um, invest Buffalo Niagara, which is based in Buffalo, but is a regional marketing wing of Western New York, uh, Buffalo Niagara partnership out in the city of Buffalo, if you will. So a lot of those different boards, I just try to always refine and refresh your, your, your numbers of contacts out there. Um, and, and what's nice is most of the bigger developments in Cattaraugus County, if you will, if they are developers in Western New York, a lot of them have done projects, whether it's from Niagara County to Chautauqua County to Erie County. So a lot of that we try to stay in as well, you know, whether it's Ellicott development or Simonelli development or, you know, you know, name a number of Equest development, name a number of, of the larger uh, Sabarino, which I think you're going to start to hear a lot, uh, their name, Sabarino development. They are um, very, very, very close to the proposed manufacturer's Hanover. Uh, redevelopment project in the city of Olean. So uh, a lot of those, uh, I would say, Western New York related developers have all conducted projects within Cattaraugus County. So we're always trying to, you know, work with our local municipalities, whether it's our, you know, other, uh, you know, CPAs, accountants, attorneys that often have real estate clients. That's always a nice lead source as well, because they're often, let's say, doing the real estate closing, they're doing the under or the audits for a uh, you know, a firm that's, you know, doing either, you know, private sector business or manufacturing or development, things like that. Yeah. Interesting. So, so how, yes. how are you funded? How, how's the IDA funded? That's a, another great question because this is often a very a critical point when we talk about the agency. We are actually self-funded. Uh, so what that means is any project that the IDA is party to, we have an admin fee um, which is a 1% of the project amount. So I'll give you an example. Um, Holiday Valley, which is often, you know, to the IDA, um, seeking our assistance on the redevelopment project. Let's say they have a $2 million project. Our admin fee would be $20,000. So the developer would pay us um, themselves. So we are not funded from the county, we're not funded from the state, no funding from the feds or locals. So it's really on us as a, as a board and staff 
uh, to make sure that we are, you know, conducting projects and, and, and always out there trying to get leads. Um, you know, obviously, yes, to pay the bills, but more so is to, to keep that um, temperature up of economic development and redevelopment up uh, in the climate of Cattaraugus County. So that's how we are funded. We are, you know, self-funded. The developer can choose our benefits. What we do is we put together a cost benefit analysis. So we say, okay, your $2 million project, you're going to save X. It's going to cost you Y. And that's your decision to go forward or not. So typically, again, most 95% of the projects we're party to, um, we've done projects as small as $100,000 to make it work. And we've done projects as large as $40 million, you know, in the energy side with national fuel. So the, it's a wide range, um, but, you know, we're starting to, we're, you know, we can do projects relatively, you know, very, very, um, I, I think, set to our climate in Cattaraugus County. In fact, we're just doing an adaptive reuse project just now in the city of Olean, the former Olean Standards Building, 12,000 square foot building. Developer's gonna put in four units of upper upper end housing, rental housing, which is needed, which, um, and that project, I think it's just about 200,000 and we're able to allow a real property tax savings, sales tax savings, all the while while keeping our costs um, smaller than his benefit, so. So you're, so on a $200,000 project, you, your fee is $2,000. Yep. Yep. And, and he, on a project like that might save about 20,000. Exactly. Exactly. And that's it. You're, you're, you're spot on. Um, and, and that's typically what we, we look at is, is it, is the project, is that project applicant going to, you know, keep this for the long haul? Is it something that they are going to portfolio manage? And the answer is yes. It's a local owner of a, of a restaurant right down by Bonaventure uh, who owns Fusion on Main. So it's a local person that says, hey, that, that's going to be a project for, you know, my, my, you know, annuity, if you will. So we try to keep our fee uh, small. The benefits may not be huge. We know that. But they're, they're big enough um, that will especially allow him to start saving some dollars on the sales tax, yes, on the redevelopment, but also a two on, on the real estate tax, where those first few years, it's almost like that new investment is not there. So it's allowing him to say, okay, I'm going to continue. We've never removed a tax from a tax base. So we don't, you know, an IDA won't diminish a tax base. Yes, we'll forego that in investment. Um, but it's almost like an annuity for the future, if you will. So that's, that's a key, key point is, you know, yeah, it may not seem a large, but in terms of the first few years, he's going to save probably some key dollars uh, until it gets fully rented and occupied. Um, so I've, I, I know I've seen some things in the papers about maybe wind farms and those yep. kind of things or solar and, and whatnot. Yep. What um, is the role that you play the same? Is that, I mean, is it really, you guys are a tax really organization almost? Yes, a, a great question. And, and I keep saying that because it's very pertinent to today's time. Uh, so the idea over the last uh, several years, let's just go three to five years, has been, um, we've been around, if you will, you know, commercial solar installations and proposed wind farms that are proposed in Cattaraugus County. Alley Cat Wind Farm up in the Freedom Farmersville area. Uh, of the county. Uh, that project is a little bit on hold, so we're, we have not, uh, you know, gone far with that. But what we can talk to in regards to the com commercial solar installations, the idea has been party to five uh, thus far. One, in fact, which um, benefits uh, St. Bonaventure uh, University in, in terms of their, their, their power rates that's built over in the city of Olean, Solian um, East, it's called. Or Solian West, excuse me, it's over by Siemens. Um, so yes, we have the ability with that is to establish a pilot based off of those installations because the way New York State taxes um, energy producing prop, um, plants, if you will, it, it's very not it, it's it's very um, 
it's very cost prohibitive in the state. So they almost developers have to utilize an IDA to help brokerage um, a real estate plan that works, a tax structure that works, I should say. Got it. Mm -hmm. um, so, all right, so this is interesting. So I'm guessing that there's um, groups of people who are also thinking, you know, you, you guys are, are focused on on this ability to help and um and as you're building something or if you're siemens and you're adding something new or whatever yep um the thing that's that's hitting me in the head is okay amazon is going to go for a second you know their your second headquarters and stuff yep. like that um and all the and so many people were jumping over themselves to um <laughs> create these opportunities to, yeah. to win that. Yeah. Um, and whatever ended up happening is kind of uh, interesting, but yeah. um, I'm interested to know like where those types of things play out with what you're doing. And Sure. I mean, that's, a, that's always a question we get and it's, it's and what I, I guess I would think as you're looking at is, you know, luring companies or projects to the, to the community or to the County. Um, that is something we're often doing. Um, we utilize kind of two fronts with that, if you will, just because, um, you know, uh, company recruitment uh, is so expensive now in terms of these companies now will deal with only various, you know, proven site selectors or, you know, higher end. I think there was a company out of Chicago, Crow, um, a lot of these different, you know, um, attorney firms, real estate firms. So what I mean by that is we utilize, um, we have via contract, somebody who uh, kind of helps us on the side of looking at businesses, where they're looking to site businesses, what, what they're proposing to kind of keep us in the loop. And we also deal with Invest Buffalo Niagara, which is charged with marketing Western New York's uh, assets, if you will, to the outside region. So we pay into them as a board level membership of $10,000 a year. And that's a benefit um, that's, that can be utilized by any group in the county. So what I mean by that is we've done everything from working with possible redevelopments of the Olean Center Mall to projects just like as you had mentioned with uh, uh, HK2 or HQ2 uh, of Amazon. So you're right. I mean, it's, we always have to have an eye and ear on the outside. Um, you know, it's challenging having one staff and it sometimes it, it's, it's good to have, you know, lower budgets and, you know, a skinny uh, operating overhead. But as you know, sometimes that's self-defeating. So the board, you know, we have a tremendous board that allows us to pay uh, a professional, uh, basically, he's almost like a headhunter, if you will, where that person, his sole mission is to go out, um, you know, he, now he's a private uh, contractor, if you will, so he works for other, you know, counties or states, but I'm saying is he keeps it in the loop for Cattaraugus County. If he knows a business that, you know, needs, you know, uh, let's say a rural area or, um, you know, um, some sort of north-south corridor, um, between, between I-86 or 219, you know, there's various, tr um, infrastructure, you know, um, positives that we could uh, also utilize. So what I'm saying is we do have Buffalo, Invest Buffalo Niagara, and then we have a private sector consultant, if you will, to always try to, Hey, I hear this company is looking, I hear Dick's Sporting Goods is looking for a new warehouse, or I'm hearing CVS needs a hundred thousand square feet, um, you know, in this corridor. So a lot of those are, are what we are working on. In fact, we probably have two to three irons in the fire. Um, boy, if we could hit one of them, Tom, it would be an absolute home run. We are working with uh, a very large scale um, food producer, I guess I can't use really a name, uh, but they would be looking upwards of 400 people. They, ha they would have a relationship with Southern Ontario to the East Coast. Uh, so when people kind of think, how does Cattaraugus County fit into that? Um, a lot of these companies, um, you know, certainly the county can play a role uh, as a site. So we are constantly working with Empire State Development, our kind of sister organization with the state, as well as, again, our, our kind of assets that we have, whether it's internally that, you know, myself making those calls, going to companies, or is it working with 
uh, our outside marketing areas to try to bring in or lure companies, you know, to, to within Cattaraugus County. So in a, something like that, so there's a potentially 400 new jobs. Yep. That for a county like ours, that's a, that's a big deal. Yep. Um, how many, we have uh, about 80,000 people. In yeah, there. about 79,000 people uh, in the population. I think the latest census, of course, and then we have a workforce amount of just about 32,000. Okay, so on another call, uh, we can get into the demographics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think that's really fascinating and, and whatnot. Um, so I'm, ass I'm assuming that there's a, is there, like, how do, how, do, how do the groups come together to work on a deal like that? That, another great question, because often, I, I always say to people, you know, we, we geographically, Cattaraugus County, as you know, is a large county. Yeah. Um, it's spread out. It's one of the geographically largest in the state. Yeah. Um, but we're, we're also very connected in terms of dealing with our Empire State Development. They have a field rep that, that comes to our county every week. We yeah. deal a lot with, you know, um, Southern Tier West with Richard Zink or Cattaraugus County with Crystal Labors. Um, we have an economic development team that was established and it has members such as myself um, JCC, we'd love to have you on it. I think you would be a tremendous member. Um, it's, it's a, it's a, we meet bi-weekly, um, you know, not hard and fast, uh, you know, it's, it's every other Monday, but what I mean is often if people could call in, um, they share information, we have presenters. So what I mean is we essentially on the economic development team have the core agencies and departments that deal with economic development, anyone from a federal level, to a state level, to a county level, um, you know, in that regard. And often that when we meet that team every other Monday, and then we have like an internal listserv, if you will. So we put out when we hear about job openings, when we hear about job closures, or companies looking to hire, companies looking to invest, um, what incentives are out with there? Are there any potential grant programs? Are there any state award programs? So believe it or not, it's been a very, it's very well connected in terms of the local uh, economic development. Because I know the famous question is this, if I roll into town and I'm not from New York State, Cattaraugus County, who the heck do I talk to? Where do I begin? And you're right, that's always a uh, it's that's why we really encourage people that are maybe you know new to a company, new to a state, uh, new to the Olean Chamber with, with Jim Panabianco at, at uh, you know Olean Business Development Corp. Is is to maybe say, hey, how about putting this simple as a website? We're creating an app, a business app. We have a new website, investcataraugus.com, where we're trying to speak directly, is almost like a virtual one stop and trying to make that more of the platform. So on there, you would have all the listing for the towns, the building inspectors, um, meeting schedules of the towns, previous minutes, our contact information, banking information, uh, you know, real estate companies, title companies. Basically, if you're brand new to the county and you would, we would, we're putting together everything you would need for a real estate transaction, economic development transaction, a retention aspect. It could be a local company. You know, as you know, we have companies here that, um, you know, are, are, are based worldwide or they're based, you know, across the U.S. So let's say they have a new plant manager. He or she comes into this, jumps on, says, hey, we need to buy, you know, $300,000 of new equipment. Are there any state programs, county programs out there? So we're almost trying to take it as simple as that uh, to have those virtual one stops, if you will, so that it's, it's shortening that curve of, I didn't know who to talk to. I didn't know where to go because it's a very valid point. Um, you know, the speed of business, the speed of, of everybody out there is that information needs to be, you know, virtually right out there is as simple as black and white versus, okay, I got to go to the county's website. I got to go to the IDA's website. When's their next meeting? When does that town meet? I need a building plan. I need a variance. And, and, and you know, that's where people can get frustrated um, if it's not set up correctly. So what's the, um, I mean, that's really helpful to just get a lay of the landscape really. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. The, 
so if you had a magic wand, um, what, what, how would you use it? Wow, magic wand. Uh, <laughs> first and foremost, maybe I'd, I'd, I'd uh, cure COVID-19. But uh, yeah. <laughs> no, um, great. I, I love the question because one of the uh, – uh, with Leadership Cataraugus that I was part of, one of the one of the skits, if you will, that we performed last year was a magic wand. How would you, how would you, you know, bless the county with a with a wand, if you will? Yeah. Three wishes. How would you do it? And you know, Tom, I really think it it begins um, with workforce. I, I think workforce um, having you what you're going to grow at Bonas is so needed. It is kind of what we talked about last week. And what I mean by that, I, I, my mind's all over with it because I used to think when I first started with the job in 06, you know, when we'd hear the stats of, of the baby boomers set to retire or these companies that, you know, people were set to retire. I thought, oh my God, this is tremendous. This is absolutely tremendous. We're going to have all these retirees and we're going to have people, new job openings. We're going to have, you know, new teachers and new uh, you know, CNC people and new drivers. Well, guess what started to happen? we realized workforce development is such a critical topic in Cattaraugus County. And you could put any, you know, cliche word, human capital would be my, probably my number one to, to grow, invest in our youth, invest in entrepreneurials, invest in making uh, the, the space better. Um, you know, I commend like communities like Gowanda, Cattaraugus, um, what's Olean doing, Allegheny. And what I mean by that is they're trying to make that community beautiful. They're trying to make that space nice. They try to put flowers in boxes. And I did not, it, that part never used to click at me because I thought that was just ho-hum. Okay, that's good. No, I saw it here where I grew up in the town of Hamburg where the streetscaping and people wanted to move back in. They wanted to um, take a job even if they had to drive. Uh, be, nothing wrong with being a bedroom community. So where I go with this long speech would be, you know, if we could invest in human capital, um, whether it be Dream It, Do It, our programs, you know, our universities, um, JCC, uh, BOCES is such a tremendous asset in, you know, the MTI Center, what you will. But to, to work with that, um, you know, to invest in our, in our, in our skill sets, our, our education of, of, of people to learning trades and, and professions, um, because ultimately, you know, what makes me sad is whether it's from a pizza shop to a bank to Siemens, and I'll use real companies, Holiday Valley, to Olean General. The number one topic now when we meet with these companies um, is, is we can't find people. Or, you know, and I think some people get, they get clouded with, ah, oh, it's Cattaraugus County. What do you mean they can't find people? There's, you know... I don't understand that we, you know, I don't see big businesses moving in. What I don't see all these people hiring. No, there's those jobs. There is that need. And it's just the right people. Um, I think if that was, if I was to wave it one way and then wave it the other way, I think it would be, to be honest, it would be some sort of mixed use, um, clean um, a manufacturing business park. Uh, so you would have, you know, not your traditional dirt and grease and loud and, and toxic, if you will, but some sort of professional white collar, blue collar, uh, mixed use testing, uh, R&D centers, have it permitted, have the infrastructure in, have the technology in, and have those, those buildings set up uh, to, be, to be built, to be compressed, uh, and have those ready to go, not just a shovel ready site. Uh, but to have some sort of a semblance of a, you know, a clean business park, if you will, because I cannot tell you the number of companies that we deal with um, that are looking for 30, 40, 50,000 square feet and under. Um, you know, I think the days of having several hundred thousand or over in some regard, I mean, not everything. Um, but if we had those new buildings ready to go, not just shovel ready, but moving in, I mean, we're, we're dealing with one company now that, um, you know, is on the crux of maybe building one because they can't find it. Um, but the flip side is if these companies can't find that space, they start looking elsewhere if they don't want to build net new. 
So, you know, to me, it would be great to have some sort of, 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 you know, space where these companies could, could land, uh, and then also ultimately have, uh, a workforce, uh, blessing, if you will, just because I will tell you when I started again in 06, I used to think taxes, regulations, you know, cost of business in the state. No, it's the number one topic is, Hey, we, you know, we, we can find five people, but you know, four don't, four won't show back up. It, it's one of those things. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, that gives a different insight, I think, um, into, into what's, where we're really at. Sure. Um, so I want to shift the conversation before we have to go and sure. into uh, the current state. You know, today is April 10th, yeah. 2020. Um, we're about a month into, almost a month into this, you know, lockdown, if you will, from COVID-19. Yeah. And um, it's had just a massive effect on our economy and not to mention um, human life and, and yeah. other things. So I, I'd love to get your thoughts and perspective on how that affects um, our county, since that's what you're focused on, how yep. that affects the IDA uh, now and in the future, what that, what that looks like. Uh, a tremendous question. And, you know, as you talk about, you know, the loss of, of life or that first, I mean, that's, uh, it's, it hits home. Um, so, you know, our thoughts and prayers are certainly impacted or with the impacted people and their families. And I think from a business point of view, um, just this morning, we had a conference call with a, a PR firm that we utilize to put out basically, um, you know, uh, a notice to our stakeholders. So we're going to be issuing that. Basically, it's going to have everything on there from, you know, Department of Labor to the SBA, the Small Business Administration, to our programs, the ID programs, local loan programs. And we're going to blast that out to our members, our contacts, you know, uh, also through the media, press releases and whatnot, basically trying to stay in front of our businesses the most we can. So as you noted, I mean, over the last several weeks, um, we have been basically just answering the calls, answering emails and triaging the questions, no pun intended, but just essentially saying, Hey, um, you know, I'll give you an example. Um, the new hotel that's being built off uh, in, in, in Olean by Dresser Rand or Siemens, you know, there's a stop order on construction. Initially that was deemed acceptable. Um, and now it was a week later was all construction must stop. Um, you know, we're seeing companies that they're been busy, they're, they're impacted greatly. Um, a lot of which is the worldwide market in China. Um, soul epoxy right in Olean, um, 80% of the products they make go to China or overseas. So once this pandemic, you know, started there, they actually started to see downturn a few months ago, unfortunately. So these companies are still trying to, you know, keep their employees uh, on the payroll or are they furloughing them? Just, we had a conversation yesterday about a local manufacturer that's going to furlough their employees for two weeks. The good news though, hopefully the good news, is they just picked up a very large order, uh, which will bring them right back in late, um, a backlog of business in late April when they start. So we are just trying to literally man the phones and, and really work uh, mostly again with our state and federal elected officials, because often these programs, whether it's the Payroll Protection Act, um, you know, whether it's, it's uh, what's deemed essential businesses, and often we are trying to really work and we have weekly conference calls with um, Congressman Reed's office to our state center, George Borello's office uh, within our county as well. So, you know, from an ID point of view, um, short term, you know, it, it hasn't hit impacted our business yet. And what I mean by that is projects that we've been working on, um, you know, over the last few months, are still transforming. Uh, we do have an we do have an, our next board meeting is April twenty eighth. Uh, we will be conducting that via you know remote technology, if you will. But it's anticipated we could have three new applications, three projects for that meeting. Where I do see that Tom happening 
yeah. is, is a few months from now. Yeah. Where I, I, I think once the businesses flip their lights back on, hey, that investment or that new purchase or that new addition we're going to build, I think that's going to stymie development, you know, the latter part of the second quarter, third quarter, things like that. So, you know, I don't want to um, pretend that we're not impacted yet by saying, hey, we're going to have, you know, we had two projects in the month of March. We're going to have three projects in April. Gee, this is not so bad. My fear is any net new projects that we're going to be stay, say, you know, uh, started in the summer or early fall, I think as budgets get cut, staffing gets limited, um, I, I think we're really, our dry spot, I think is going to be coming up, um, you know, towards, towards uh, the summer, if you will. And, you know, I think only a saving grace would be if the, if the state starts to relax the, you know, non-essential list, if you will, for construction, just because we have, we have, a, you know, various projects under construction that have been deemed non-essential that have had a stop. Yeah. Um, so I, I do think we'll see a little bubble of business, um, but I think our fear, and I had this conversation with our uh, chairman this morning, is we start looking towards the summer and fall, um, we don't know how many businesses may not come back, and yep. we don't know how much, you know, if, if a company was going to spend $500,000 this year on new equipment or stuff, do they just simply say, you know, that's gone. Uh, we'll figure that out next year. So. Yeah, that's, it, it's a tough time. I, I think it's, it's really an interesting time. I've had conversations with, you know, over a hundred business owners and yep. the whole range from laying off 95% of my staff yep. uh, or their staff yep. to, um, you know, they can't, you know, their business is really growing and, and it's hard for them to get their employees to come to work because of all the, the safety uh, concerns and stuff like that. And it's, it's a, uh, it's really, it's really a weird. It, you hit excellent point. I mean, again, a conversation I had with Tom this morning um, and Tom Buffamani, who's our chairman from Buffamani, Whipple and Botafero, BWB. So they have a network of companies as their clients. So obviously he doesn't tell me specific names, but just to your point, we have some companies that are business as usual, if not growing. Yeah. Um, and, and I think you you hit the nail right on the head. There is going to be a little bit of the company, the, the, the employees are not feeling comfortable coming to work. Um, and they're not feeling comfortable, you know, in a, in a, in a room of multiple people or, or product. And I, and I think that's a real concern um, because again, we, we do have, you know, some of our distillers locally have flipped over from making spirits to making hand sanitizer. Um, there's a company right down the road uh, from you guys in, in Cattaraugus that um, is potentially looking at a state contract um, to maybe make cotton swabs for the testing. So, you know, there is a little bit of, hey, some of these businesses are actually, you know, uh, maybe on a bit of a curve up. And I think that you're right. I mean, it's getting that physical human capital employees um, that are saying, hey, I don't feel comfortable yet. Um, you know, we've seen some of that with some restaurants. We've had restaurants say, I can do takeout, um, but they've asked their employees, do you feel safe coming in? They said, no. So it, you're, you're right on. It's, 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 um, it, it's I, I wish, you know, in our thinking of lights is you could turn a light on, no pun intended, but I think that light's gonna go on, but it's gonna take, it's like those old vapor lights. It's gonna take, you know, it's going to take a while before that light turns on. Um, and that's uh, unfortunate. I think as we see in ground floor economic development, talking to our companies, it's kind of like we knew the companies that were close to getting the shovel in the ground. It's the ones that were secondary tertiary of saying, Hey, we have a project we want to start in August of 2020. Yeah. Those are the ones I worry about. Um, those are the projects that I think are, let's say our, our book of business I think that's going to dry up a bit um, and just depending how fast or how long it takes to have some sort of a semblance of a rebound, um, you know, within the economy of Cattaraugus County and New York state as a whole. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an, it's an interesting time and it's, so you, you don't uh, do anything in hospitality, right? 
Well, we, we do. Um, we do offer incentives in hospitality. Yes. Um, so I, I want to make that um, when, when we define tourism destination, hospitality, we can incentivize hotels, you know, um, various. Okay, so we did mixed use breweries, Ellicottville Brewing Company, Steelbound Brewing in Ellicottville as well. Uh, Four Mile Brewing in Olean, we deem that actually as tourism. You know, as you know, in Cattaraugus County, tourism is a, a roughly a $230 million economy. Nearly 16% of the county's employment is tied to a job in, in tourism uh, based off NAICS codes. So absolutely, if it's, um, you know, the IDA has been party to the redevelopment of the um, uh, Holiday Inn Express in Olean, the new hotel that's going up, the new Hampton Inn that's going up uh, right in front of Dresser Ann. Mm -hmm. um, we are working on right now, uh, maybe, you know, uh, potential other, you know, tourism destinations. So hospitality is something we absolutely support. It's uh, a very uh, a lucrative pilot in terms of real estate savings because we know, you know, the ups and downs of that. So it's a 14 year real estate savings. Mm -hmm. um, we offer the sales tax. Uh, so all the furnishing fixtures, equipment in your room, everything from bedding to your lamp to your nightstand we would have the ability to support. So yes, hospitality uh, is absolutely, when, we, when I say tourism destination, it's kind of our term, if you will, but hospitality uh, would, de would fall underneath that and deemed qualified as well. So absolutely. Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah, we've got, um, I, yeah. you know, like Holiday Valley Inn, they just went through a few million dollar renovation where we help out of that. Uh, the Wingate Hotel in Ellicottville, when that was built, um, again, the new one. So yeah, hospitality, um, you know, you know, Airbnbs, uh, you know, uh, boutique hotels, absolutely the idea would be able to assist. Got it. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Well this, so, well this, um, obviously this is having such an effect on hospitality and, and pretty much shut it, shut that down all the hotels and, yep. and um, in restaurants and bars and everything. So it's, um, yeah, it's, a, I mean, it's a tough time. And to your point, I think that it's going to take some time for people to, I think people are want to run out of their houses. Um, <laughs> but, um, but for them to run out of their houses and hang out with a lot of other people will, will take some time. And I think maybe yeah. some, uh, advancement in the, in the, um, um, just the vaccinations and testing and that yeah. kind of thing. And, um, but as that, uh, it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds. It's, it's no uh, question. Yeah. You, I mean, that's a, exactly kind of our thought too, is we've talked about, you know, if it comes back, are, are people still going to want to go to festivals like in May and June? I mean, I, you know, uh, Somerville or Summerfest, that's always in Ellicottville, you know, on 4th of July, how could that be impacted? Your various festivals that happen in Olean throughout the year, Bonifat or, you know, Bonagate, you know, it's, I think you're right. I think a lot of people may um, support it in terms of, you know, hey, I'm glad they're doing it, but are they staying home as well, you know, throughout this year? So I, I think, you know, you're, you're right. I mean, I couldn't agree more with that sentiment that um, I think there's going to be some, you know, serious, quote, hangover of this once it, you know, kind of tra traverses through our uh, quality of life and our, and our daily life. Yeah. Well, Corey, this has been uh, this has been just a great learning experience for me, and I think whoever whoever will be watching this. And what's the best way for people to um, you know contact you or or learn more? Yeah, that, wonderful. Um, our our direct number is seven one six six nine nine two thousand five. My email is Corey C O R E Y at C A T T C O I D A dot com. Or our website, you could just Google Cat County IDA uh, or Invest Catalog, as you could Google and, and all that and contact me on there. And again, you know, we great, I greatly welcome this opportunity. Um, you know, from my point of view, I, I, I love these engagements. It helps us really kind of boil down to brass tacks what we do and, and, and get off a, a formal sense. And I also encourage, I appreciate the ability to, to, to basically say what we do. This helps us market or gives an idea. And, you know, we're often from a student point of view, we're always contacted by firms looking for, um, you know, internships or possible employment. 
So wherever we can kind of cross share or cross sell that information um, from your point of view, from your students, or if they're looking to, you know, contact us for, uh, you know, some sort of a project or a, an internship down the road in terms of that, get, I'm more than welcome uh, and happy to help out wherever I can on that regard. Yeah. I mean, clearly the, uh, you're connected in with a lot of the businesses that you're work, working with. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, you spoke a little bit about knowing a, what contracts might be coming and stuff yep. like that. Yep. So having that sort of finger on the pulse is, is, could be valuable for, for people looking for jobs or, or whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I encourage you, you know, please, you know, wherever we can be in touch because I, you know, nothing, nothing is better than having someone, you know, obviously if they come into Bonners or they come into, you know, Cattaraugus County, uh, and they say, hey, what's out there? You know, what's for me to do if I stay here, grow a business or start a business? And I think that's, that, that's the stuff that really lights the belly in our, in the fire in our belly, just because it's, it's so encouraging that once, you know, we get a few success stories, you know, with the downtown Olean, the walkable Olean, you start to see places like Union Whiskey, you start to see things like the Manny Hanny building that'll be redeveloped. You start to see things like Four Mile Brewing, um, you know, with, with things like, you know, the anchor of St. Bonaventure and JCC. You know, there, 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 there's some synergies there, and it's just a matter of, you know, getting those together. And I think the more people we can keep in here and, and, and ex that can experience it, and wherever role we can play in that to help uh, just identify that, I'm more than happy to. Yeah. Well, I know I appreciate that you're in the role that you're in, uh, helping helping the Cattaraugus County and, and St. Bonaventure and everything else. Um, so thank you for, your, for, for that and your service. And I know you... You sit on a lot of boards and are uh, and are a big cheerleader for for this whole area. So thank no, you. It's my pleasure. I greatly welcome you know you having the opportunity, giving me the opportunity for this platform and to be a uh, part of this. Uh, so I res you know can't thank you enough, uh, Tom. Thank you very much. My right. pleasure. Thanks, Corey. Thank you. All right. Good work. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. it was awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Yep. How any plans for Easter or is it still locked down? Um I might I'll get my kids on uh yeah. on a hunt and it'll be fun. Um yeah. we've got just the we have a great situation. We have a ton of land and we did a camp out the other night and Oh it's awesome. Um so it's um this is the bank boardroom that I'm in. Here. Okay, I thought I thought it looked familiar. I wasn't sure if they were just the pictures or the yeah the border. Okay. Have you been up? Have you been up? I here? have. Your dad he gave me, and I've actually been to his. I told him his talks on the history of the county and Cattaraugus. I could listen to him forever on that, and I swear to God, as a history buff, my dad was a history teacher. It, and the, the facts surround Cattaraugus County. And I love learning about the Irish settlements. Um, yeah. He was telling me all about that. That was, gave me the book um, because the IDA, man, when was it? Maybe two years ago. Maybe it was your sister who works there as well. At the bank. Yeah. yeah okay. So um, the village of Cattaraugus is trying to put in that senior center. Yeah. Yeah. And the IDA owned that land and we yeah, yeah, donated yeah. it. Right. So we were doing, doing a lot with, you know, at the bank, uh, the mayor would have us there and um, he gave me, you know, kind of that write up of uh, pictures and whatnot. And we actually use that a lot in our packets, like the pictures and Teddy okay. Roosevelt. Not that. So absolutely. I love it. Yeah. He's, uh, he's spent quite a bit of time on, on that lately in the past mm -hmm. few months and um sort of writing a, a history of cutlery like a, a like a more advanced oh okay in the area and that's that's actually to a point where he wants me to start sharing it with people and with the stits and whatnot um no kidding he's he's uh yeah, I mean the guy. The, he's he's a, a super history buff. As you can yeah, see his pictures and the you know you yeah yeah yeah. Um, the and I like put the Bana thing in front of the in in front of the money uh, the money. Yeah. Frame, but <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, but yeah, so the I guess well that that makes me think of a couple things. One is. Um, that project, that senior project is on hold, right? I think. 
Do you know I, anything about it? I, yeah, I, I think it's on hold, but apparently it was a state funding, um, and the funds were reappropriated. So I don't now The state just passed the budget last week, Monday, Tuesday, um, or Tuesday, April 1st. I don't know. Um, we have actually, we have a call next week with this, uh, t uh, George Brello on various topics of that were included in the state funding. So yeah. I think that was reappropriated though. Oh, cool. So yeah. Kathy Young had put it in. Yeah. And it's very common. I mean, I, I didn't want to tell work that cause I know he's been working his butt off on it, but there's times that if it gets approved, it may take like two cycles of the budget to get the money. That's the hard part. Got it. So, I mean, we had it with a rail one time where it was like, it took like six years to administer the funds. Um, but I do believe I'm 99.9% .9 sure that that those funds were, were re opt if you will, in this year's budget, which technically would be what they call season and they could be released. So I do think it's, it's something that could happen. Yes, I do. So what's, so how do they move forward with that? Well, I think it's just a matter of getting the, um, what is it? Um, the project was approved through the state or they approve the funds through what a state program, OCR it's called office of community renewal. And then essentially they're, um, they would, I think what they're trying to do in this one was they would have to build it first and then the funds would be delivered. So like on the back end, but they're trying to do like partial payments for construction. Mm -hmm. So I think that was the hiccup uh, with that. Yeah. Cause I know uh, Mark, uh, the architect and. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I mean, hello. Um, yep. Yep. So, so I, my dad and I were over there like reviewing drawings and stuff for this, for this project in, and then I, and then the last I had heard was uh, that they were trying to find, figure out where the, where the money was. The money. Well, yeah. I, I think, no, I remind, and I actually, I talked to Mark ironically in the late fall, uh, early this winter. And he was saying they were hoping that things could start, you know, in 2020. So I, I do think it is, it's, you know, waiting just to connect some of those pieces, but I'm not a hundred percent sure on myself. I, I'll put it this way on our call. I think it's Tuesday at two o'clock. We'll be able to learn a little more. Awesome. Yeah. So, so that brings me to sort of my next question. So that butts up against the rail yep. and, and is where, so the next time we can like get out of the house. Yeah. I'd love to meet you here in Cataraga. Yeah. Show yeah. You I love it. Yeah. And stuff. Yep. So the hotel backs up to the railway and you know, that rails to trails, I think is, is something that will be important. Obviously Rick, Rick Lefebvre yep. uh, has maybe mentioned it once or twice, and, <laughs> um, yep. Yep. And, which, and it's, that's been really great. So the, um, so what, so what's, what do I need to do to like push that down the road? I will tell you this, uh, and, and, and we did talk about it at our March 24th IDA board meeting, because here, here's where I'm at. As long as we could get local support, you know, okay. our, our fear was this, um, let, let's say, cause we have communities that still want the rail. But if we have communities like on that spur line, which we, you know, Cataraugus is a spur line, you know, off the main. Yeah. Yeah. Which you, do you guys, you think you guys want that rail gone? Yeah. Okay. We can get, we can get Sutter Sticks um, to agree that they don't right. want it. And as soon as it's in, in the general consensus that I hear, Cause I haven't put, I don't give out my opinion or haven't like given really my opinion to anybody. But when I ask somebody what's going on with it, the, the, it's like, yeah, let's do rails to trails or the it's well, is doesn't set our sticks need it. Yeah. <laughs> and great question. All the way going back to Chris Cadican days, you know, the previous owner, 
they used to take in rail, okay? They would take in shipments of raw or big paper rolls by rail. The problem with that, that section, they call the jungle, always slides. So it's always dropping shale from a cliff onto those sets of track between Persia and Cataraugus. Yeah. Chris Cadigan used to pay, believe it or not, he used to pay, well, Setter Six used to pay to maintain that rail bed. So the IDA said, look, this is a huge cost. It's not a huge cost. It was just, there's a maintenance cost every year, you know, five grand, six grand to clean it up. Chris would say, hey, it's worth it for me. Mm-hmm. Well, two things, three, two, three things really happen. And the biggest one is this, Setter Sticks doesn't need it based off of this. And it's no fault to Dingman, Setter Sticks, blah, blah, blah. The main hub of paper was coming out of Chicago area. So that, to, to, the, to get paper to Cataraugus, you could place an order, Tom, and set a come in in a week, it may take three weeks now. So the way the big companies, like it's not, C, is it CSX? I think it's a CSX main that would get the paper to Cataraugus because the short line is really the Buffalo Southern to go on. And then it's go on. And then it's New York and Lake Erie. The paper gets into Buffalo. It may sit for a week. Then it gets down to Cataraugus. So Chris Cadigan basically said this, it's, it's, it's the main rail. It's the big fish, if you will. They don't want to deliver a roll or two to, to Cataraugus. So they essentially said, you know, go away. But I'll tell you what's helped. Diesel prices have come way down, right? And yeah, and they can get paper now on a truck. And like, like Eric Pritchard will say, or Chris Cadigan will say, I could call up for a roll of paper. And in three days, it's there guaranteed. Rail, it could be three weeks. So our biggest fear was the same thing. If we pull up the rail, do we have a local manufacturer saying, what are you doing? Yeah. And, and that's the last thing we'd want to do. But I think as long as we had, let's say, public support from, say, Cataraugus is the biggest village and town, if you will, on that line. Because our biggest fear is we pull it up and then that community says, hey, wait a minute. We, you know, we have a vested interest in that as well. And we respect that. I mean, as we own it it doesn't mean we want to be jerks to the communities on it. I mean, I, it's, it's always that, but if, if the, if the, if you guys came or the Cataraugus or your, the LDC came to us and said, Hey, this line's been embargoed since 2007. Mm-hmm. Okay. It hasn't had any operable traffic since 2007. Um, the cost to rehab it is just astronomical, but it's not even that anymore. It's to get the main hub of product, is CSX doesn't want to play nice with the little guys. So it's actually like Dingman is a customer to CSX. So he would call up and say, hey, when you're going through the Midwest, you got to hook me a car of paper and get it to Buffalo. They might go, okay, in two weeks we'll get it. Well, Chris Cadigan saying, I can't, or you know, Eric saying, I can't do that. So we know we have coverage with them. And I think right now Rick brings a good point. With the Ralph Wilson Foundation, the time is now to get that up. Um, and I think if we could connect the rails to trail to Cataraugus, we'd love to do it. You, you have our, my support and the board support. And what we'd love to do is come up and say, we're going to start taking bids to pull up the scrap. And then, you know, we're going to put in applications for some sort of rails to trail. You won't get any grief or gruff out of the IDA. I can tell you that. Now, prior, it wasn't the IDA. It was Dingman would love to rattle sabers with Rick. Dingman, I love the guy, but he loves to rattle sabers with anybody. It's just, you know, like I said, when I started with the IDA in 06, I'd go out to like Cataraugus, Little Valley, Dayton, South Dayton, uh, Markham's, all these little communities on the western part of the county. I'm like, why don't they like the IDA? I go, what did the IDA ever do? Well, it's because Bob would walk in there with a heavy hand and, you know, spray weeds in the middle of the day near a park or, you know, park cars next to, you know, like 
he'd, he'd store cars in a community and just, you know, he did things that kind of rub people. So I'd say time has passed a little of that. So if, if the village collectively, it doesn't even have to be formal government. If the village proper and, and the likes of what you guys are trying to propel come up and say, hey, you know what, as a part of this plan, we'd like that trail or the rail that's been inoperable since 2007, gone. You know, we have the support of Setter Sticks or the community. Let's get this up. And I think that would give the idea the coverage we would need to basically be good community stewards. Because I'll tell you, we're fighting the flip side of this is over in South Dayton, where I just got a call yesterday that saying, hey, we want to start planning groups and we need the depot clean and we want to get the train into South Dayton. So some communities want it and some are saying, you know what, we'd be better served with a, with a, a nice trail system. And I think that's more what the idea is going on. Yeah. So. Yeah, if, if, we were, if, if we were on a, a, a way to ship people in from Buffalo for a weekend, yep. then, then right. like Exactly. That's not happening. <laughs> Exa- and that's, Tom, that's exactly it. I mean, when the IDA, when, when they were, tra- well, we as a consortium were put together with Erie County, Chautauqua County, and Cat County, maybe that was in 2000, God, it goes back to 2016, 17, put together a rail, um, basically a rail association to try to get passenger traffic, as you said, from Canal Side and Buffalo down through Jamestown. So they'd come down Hamburg, Gowanda, Archover. Yeah, I'll never forget the one guy in the comments said, why don't you just get your car? You know, so, and I get it. I mean, like, you could have some rail tour, leaf peepers, brewery tours, murder mysteries. I get all that. Nothing's against it. It's just, it's going to be tough to sustain that as your catalyst. You know, well, you, you have to change, change people in order to do that. If yeah, you're in exactly. New York, they don't have cars. Exactly. That's, that's what you do, but that's not how this is. Right. Honor, respect.